Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome and thanks for logging on. We are watching watches this weekend and everything is for sale. This is actually a trilogy of videos, one for each day of the Labor Day weekend. We have watches. I have answers. Reach out to me at tmasso at thewatchbox.com with all of your purchase and pricing questions. We buy what we sell. We sell what we buy. We are always looking to buy, trade, or sell. Sell us a watch. Sell us an entire collection. Or trade a watch you're not wearing for one you'll love. To buy, to trade, or to sell, reach out to me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. Jumping straight in, let's talk about Vacheron Constantin. The overseas bowed back in 1996, and the idea at the time was that it would be Vacheron's re-entry to the sports watch segment after years away. Now, the original 2 to 2 of 1977, designed by Jörg Heisek, served as the basis for the 1996 design, which was crafted by Dino Modolo and Vincent Kaufman. Now, taking a quick look at the watch, you can see this is the second generation of the overseas that came out in 2004, but the specific model you've got before you actually bowed in 2009. It was nicknamed Deep Stream during development, and I will zoom in a little bit. Deep Stream ultimately became the nickname by which this titanium and steel two-tone was known. So we have this lovely gray or anthracite titanium bezel, a dial to match in metallic sunburst, a stainless steel case that is 42 millimeters in steel and fairly thin at just over 11 millimeters thick. This is an easy watch to wear on a small wrist. The strap is an unconventional one, integrated in full and factory. It's a Vacheron rubber strap in white, giving the watch a wonderfully tropical aesthetic. Now, when you throw it on the wrist, it is very easy to wear. It's about 50.8 millimeters from lug to lug, but it's so flat that it's easy to wear underneath a cuff. And you can see how the edge of the case features a little bit of a downward cant on both sides. So if you look down the barrel, you can see the lugs really are nowhere near the edge of my wrist. And I'm pulling it as tight as I can so it'll fit snugly, which is exaggerating the compression of my wrist. This is really nowhere near borderline. You could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. Now there's a lot to love here because it really is a sports watch. Aside from being made of steel, titanium, and rubber, it's exceptionally well loomed. Flip it all over. Screw down crown, 150 meter water resistance, and a soft iron cage that gives the watch 25,000 ampere per meter anti magnetism. We'll take a quick look at that case back, which you can see features polishing, chiseling, radial satination, and then circumferential concentric satination. Inside, a JLC caliber 899 for Vacheron, five position adjusted, free sprung, automatic winding, stop seconds, quick set date, 40 hour power reserve. And of course, LeCoult historically provided Vacheron with movements as far back as the 19th century. So that combination of JLC and Vacheron, a time-honored tradition, a really great way to get into the sports watch segment with a Holy Trinity brand. Now, let's say you don't quite have money for Holy Trinity, but you love the idea of an integrated bracelet steel sports watch. Well, La Suta Original of Saxony in Germany has your number. This model, originally bowed in 2011 at Basel World as the Senator 70s, today it's known as the Vintage 70s collection, 40 millimeters in stainless steel. You can see it features a lovely sunburst dial made at the company's Forsheim dial manufacturer. Geo owns its own dial manufacturer in addition to its own movement manufacturer, so it's really insourcing most parts of the watch. We've got a combination of brushing for the pattern, the sunburst. We have Galvin organization for the underlying color, and then lacquer has been used to create the gradient fade from the center out. Geo was really ahead of the curve with these vignette or fume dials. The watch is a sports timepiece, make no mistake, automatic winding, stainless steel, 100 meters water resistant, and quite well loomed. You can see the panorama datum, and the watch does feature a screw down crown. There is a quick set system, so you can rapidly set the date discs. And note that they are flush. That's sort of a feather in the cap of any company making a double digit or grand dot system. Having the discs flush instead of superimposed is one of those marks of quality. There's also a hacking seconds function, so you can stop the seconds and set the watch to a reference time. You can see to the advantage of the owner that every single link is removable in the bracelet, and you can see how the links are countersunk, so there's almost no lateral play. It's very strong. It has the feeling of having been machined from an ingot of steel. Thick gauge, twin trigger release, single fold, deploying clasp, 
we have a push button that's built into the clasp that gives you about one centimeter of incremental adjustability. And then on the reverse side, we have caliber 39, automatic winding, 40 hour power reserve. You can see there's an element of hand finishing here, polishing of screw heads, black polishing of the stud holder, the swan's neck. We have stripes, we have snailing on the edges of the bridges. And then we also have this lovely solarized reduction wheel for the winding system. A fantastic piece that wears fairly compact. We'll do a quick wrist shot and get a sense of how it actually fits. Notice how the lugs are nowhere near the edge of my wrist here. This one really wears to advantage on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters circumference. A great way to get into a German-made luxury sports watch. So from one Fiume fade dial to another, we're shifting gears, still speaking German, but we're now in German Switzerland in Schaffhausen, the northeast of the country, where there are two watch brands of note, IWC and Moser. Moser, for 2021, decided that its already minimally branded watches would hitherto feature even less branding. And in 2022, we got the watch we see right here, which is the Endeavor Perpetual Calendar. Look very closely and you can see a ghosted, clear lacquered name on a Fumé Fade funky blue dial. This is funky blue. And I've always thought that the funky part refers principally to the color at the center, whereas at the edge, it's a little bit more navy. Now, this is a fully calibrated dial. Not every Moser watch features all of the hour indices, but I actually appreciate that. That's how I would want my Moser. The watch in white gold, as you can see, is nicely decorated with a combination of polishing and satination. It has a wonderfully fluid form with the recesses of the lug profiles, the flow of the concave ebbing and flowing bezel design. And you can see that on the underside, the case back's actually curved to match the curve of the wrist. We'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, and it wears quite nicely. You can see that the shape of the lugs and the curve of the case back mitigate against fit issues. A wonderfully comfortable and fairly thin watch. You can see how well it sits on my wrist. And it's equipped with something rarely seen on Moser watches. It's got a full deployant clasp in white gold. Generally, Moser watches feature pin buckles. This prevents you from accidentally dropping your watch. The case is 42 millimeters in diameter. You can see it has Moser's well-known Andreas Streller designed bi-directional perpetual calendar system. You can set it in both directions. Of course, the way this works is we have the date. We have a little month indicator. See that stub hand? 12 months, 12 hours. So it's indicating, for example, right now, we are looking at the eighth month, which is August, and the third. So that's how that works. Now, we also have a hacking seconds function. We have a power reserve indicator off to the side, manual wind, seven day power reserve. That's the chronometric power reserve, though in fact it will run for up to nine days. On the reverse side, we've got the movement manufacturer right down to the hairspring, the escapement and the balance, which Moser makes in house. Twin mainspring barrels, you can see the barrel arbors as well as the pivot jewels of the drivetrain set in golden chaton cups with black polished screws and nod to the pocket watch era, along with the three quarter style bridge architecture and the swan's neck click spring. We have have a slow beating balance with an overcoil hairspring. It's free sprung with a full balance bridge for shock tolerance and a 14 karat gold escapement for reduced friction. And this whole assortment can be lifted out as a unit and replaced with one that's pre-serviced to more rapidly return your watch to you during a service. And because Andreas Streller, who designed this complication system, this perpetual calendar, he realized you don't need to see the leap year all the time. So we put it on the case back of the watch. A really cool piece with a lovely and rustic kudu leather strap distinctive of Moser. But let's say you want a bigger and even bolder perpetual calendar. Well, that other brand from Schaffhausen has you covered. This is the 2010 Pilots Classic version of the IWC Big Pilots Watch Perpetual Calendar Reference 5026-18 in steel, 46.2 millimeters in diameter, a 250 piece limited edition known as the Pilots Classic, which you can see on the rotor. It's a very Halloween-y watch with this lovely dial matching strap and the dial matte black with orange. We'll do a quick loom shot right here. You can see it's well loomed at the four corners in the hour and minute hands. It's got the Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere moon phases. 
It's got the day, the date, the month. It's got a power reserve indicator over at three o'clock for the seven day power reserve. It has the world's largest automatic movement at 32, or excuse me, 38.2 millimeters in diameter. The watch does have a hacking seconds function and perhaps even more intriguingly, a quick set system and everything moves in sync. Note how the date moves, the day moves, the moon phases move, and ultimately so too do the month and the year. In fact, the year is accompanied by a decade, a century, and a millennium. This is the IWC Kurt Klaus mechanically programmed perpetual calendar system. All you do is quick set the correct date and everything else will line up correctly. So you don't need to look up, for example, the phase or age of the moon. Flip it all over, you can see the movement is large and impressive. This is the caliber 51614. And it's a seven day automatic base with the IWC Paul based Albert Peloton winding system. Very durable, very efficient, and it influenced every Paul based winding system that came after, including the famed Seiko Magic Lever. We've got a free sprung balance beating away at three hertz, five position adjusted, and with an overcoil hairspring. It's a big watch, make no mistake, at about 56 millimeters, well, really 56.5 millimeters lug to lug, and 46.2 millimeters in diameter. It's too big for my wrist, but if your wrist is larger than than mine, let's say 17 centimeters circumference and up, batter up. A lot of fun and one of the great modern IWCs. Sticking with our large, fine sports watches. By the way, this watch with a 60 meter water resistance and a screw down crown, yes, you can swim with this provided you put it on a more water resistant strap. Okay, sticking with our big high luxury sports watch theme, we have one here launched in 2018 by Roger Dubuis. This is the Roger Dubuis Excalibur Spider Pirelli, and it is a tourbillon with a limited edition of 88 pieces in DLC blackened titanium. This was a boutique exclusive limited edition. We have the flying tourbillon with a Celtic cross design, all black polished and beveled. There's a power reserve indicator off to the side for the manual wind 60 hour power reserve. You could see the Geneva hallmark adjacent to the keyless works because this is a Poisson de Genève movement. And because it is a very sporty watch, we also have plenty of luminescence. It is 45 millimeters in diameter and it features Pirelli co-branding, the Excalibur Spider Pirelli, part of the partnership between the Italian tire brand and Roger Dubuis. They actually have a two-way automotive alliance with Pirelli as well as Lamborghini. And for 2017, one year before this watch came out, Dubuis decided that quick release straps were the way of the future. So here we have Alcantara, which is a very expensive, super high end synthetic suede. You'll find it as the optional headliner in BMW and Mercedes on race cars and sports cars. They'll be on the touch point like shift knobs, steering wheels, and seat inserts. So it's really cool to see. There's Pirelli rubber on the bottom and it's a very easy system to reassemble. Just as it's a very easy system to pull apart, you snap it right back in, and the watch does come with alternative straps so you can change the look. A leaf spring closure system, snap open, snap shut for this GNF Chatelain, quick release folding clasp, and when I say quick release, I mean it. If you're gonna be able to release the strap from the case for quick swapping, you also need to be able to release the buckle from the strap and then transfer it to the new strap. So you've got that. You can see on the reverse side, the movement skeletonized, immaculately finished. Interesting, they choose engine turning across these skeletonized bridges. And you can see as I tilt through the light that the engalage is mirrored and high grade. We also have polished jewel sinks and polished screw heads. So a very good looking, properly Geneva seal movement with a big barrel visible up at one o'clock, a really special piece with a one minute tourbillon that doubles as the seconds hand of the watch. I'm actually quite partial to this piece. This bowed back in 2020, right at the onset of the current craze for green dials. And it might be the best watch that Blancpain makes. It is the Blancpain 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe Flyback Chronograph. So let's see if we've got this one wound up. I will wind it up so we can enjoy its flyback action. It is 43.6 millimeters in diameter in blackened ceramic, meaning it is exceptionally scratch resistant, which I love. I love a sports watch that does not require refinishing. 
120 click dive bezel so you can time two events concurrently one with the dive bezel and then one with the chronograph the chronograph powered by caliber f385 has a flyback function so you can reset and restart without first stopping there's hacking there's a quick set date there's 300 meter water resistance there's plenty of loom and then you flip the watch over, by the way, sail cloth strap, a very technical and durable textile with a rubber inlay on the bottom. We have a pin buckle, which includes both buckle and pin made of ceramic. And if you think about it, when you've got this watch and it's on your wrist, let's imagine this is on my wrist and it's buckled, that buckle is doing a lot of scratching back and forth as you move your wrist around the keyboard or as you write at your desk. In other words, it's doing a lot of desk diving. And a lot of brands give you a pin buckle made of some sort of DLC or PVD, steel or titanium. The fact is Blancpain with Swatch Group Material Science Resources can give you a full scratch resistance resistant ceramic buckle. On the reverse side, the rotor is triple finished satin, media blast, and beveling. The bridges feature a combination of a snailing pattern across their surface and then a beautifully broad and mirrored bevel that's among the most impressive I've ever seen on series production watches. The movement is an automatic with a 50 hour power reserve and it's got an El Primero like beat rate. So 10 beats per second, 36,000 vibrations per hour. And you can see that it's got a free sprung balance on a dual anchored balance bridge for shock resistance and an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. It's adjusted in six positions, one more than a standard chronometer. We've got a column wheel for function selection and then a smooth, seamless vertical clutch. So you can leave the chronograph running full time if you want to. And there's no jump or stagger when you start the chrono. You can also see that the dial is not only a sunburst green, but it is a gradient green dark at the edge, and then bright green metallic at the center. Finishing is spectacular, the function equally so. And you can see that the driving wheel of the chronograph looks like the rim of a Lamborghini Aventador, which was a tribute to the long-running partnership between Blancpain and Lamborghini, which actually preceded the brand's association with Roger Dubuis. Now, sports watches are hot these days, and none more than integrated bracelet sports watches. In 2021, Romain Gautier of the Valet du Jeu launched the first sports watch from the brand. That was the Continuum. Well, for 2022, he launched the, the C, Titanium Edition. This is the C, the Romain Gautier C. It is made of titanium, grade 5. It is about 9.9 millimeters thick and 41 millimeters in diameter. The dial is made of titanium. The hands are made of titanium. Even the movement made of titanium. So it is a very light watch. You'll also note, if you look closely, that the indices and the numerals are solid three-dimensional blocks of Luminova that sit on that titanium dial base. When you turn out the light, you can see how three-dimensional they are. They actually stand proud of the dial. That's a nice upscale look. We've also got our off-center small seconds. And then Romain Gautier is known for high horology finish. And this watch doesn't disappoint. It's not quite at the standard of something like a logical one, but you can see the hand chiseling done inside all of the bridges to give it that lovely tremblage look. There's also a machined bevel on the edge of the bridges, a free sprung balance for durability. And it has a 60 hour manual wind power reserve. You have beautiful architecture. So you have finish, which is the way things are decorated. But then you also have architecture, which is the way things are arranged, the size of the parts and their relationship in terms of placement relative to each other. You can see Gautier's signature wheel within a wheel, recursive wheel design, all the way down to the escape wheel itself and a balance made in-house and free sprung for durability. So when you throw this watch on the wrist, it's almost like a second skin. Being titanium of movement, dial, case, bracelet, and clasp, it's almost toy-like in how it fits. And it is super flat and flush on the wrist, easily sliding underneath the cuff, even if you're wearing a tight dress cuff. So while it is a sports watch, you can absolutely wear this full time, including with formal attire. And it's really perfect for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters. Now we've got a blast from the past that represents a couple of famous firsts for Debetun. Debetun is my favorite independent brand, and you can see here a breakthrough watch, the DB20 GMT that was launched in 2006. So this was the company's first sports watch with a screw down crown. It's 200 meters water resistant, qualifying on that front. It's made of white gold with titanium inserts for these little cabochon hours. So these are actually fired blue titanium. This was also the company's first automatic movement caliber 2024 with twin barrels automatic winding and here a 
five-day power reserve. Let's get a little bit closer, get a better sense of the watch. There's a power reserve indicator on the dial, a second time zone in 24-hour format. Uh, we have a little day-night indicator. That day-night indicator is for the local hour hand. You don't need one for the remote hour because the remote hour is in 24-hour format. Let me show you one of the cool features of this watch. You can see as the hours advance, watch me turn through 12, the second time zone is a jump hour which is a neat refinement that makes the watch a lot more dynamic and fascinating. You can also appreciate that the dial is highly layered. Outboard, we have this little white gold track that's been drilled to provide minutes. Then inboard, we have a fired titanium dial disc that includes the company's signature micro light engine engraving. And then we have a steel bridge at center with Cote de Genève. We have a power reserve indicator up at the top and I'll manual wind the watch just so you can see as it winds up, it goes from red to silver. The hands are a layer of polished titanium and blued titanium. And then we have a little polished steel frame around the secondary time zone. And we'll demonstrate that there is a system for setting that secondary time zone. Now you can see the crown is drilled and knurled. It is a screw down, again, highly water resistant watch, 45 millimeters in diameter, but just over 11 millimeters thick. It's 11.1, .1. it is very thin. This was a 50 piece limited edition. The rotor itself is titanium, the mass is platinum. Two barrels, you can see here, there's media blasting as well as satination. There's four springs at the center of the rotor because Denis Flageolet, the watchmaker behind Debitun, wanted to have an extremely shock tolerant watch. The way he did it was he created a broad rotor for the maximum lever arm and winding efficiency and then braced the ball bearing from torsional damage with these four shock protection springs and he added little jewels inside them to reduce the friction between the rotor and the springs. So you wind up with four springs on the rotor bearing. You wind up with one, two, three shock protection springs on the balance. That's triple parachute. That's patented. Let's go through everything that's patented. The double self-adjusting barrels, patented. The shock protection for the rotor, patented. The triple parachute shock protection for the balance, patented. The balance itself, which is two crossed yokes, non-annular, it's not a wheel. Titanium yokes, platinum bulbs outboard, minimal aerodynamic drag, re reduction in the effect of temperature changes on timing, and maximizing the mass effectively in the rim. That's patented. There's also a flat hairspring profile that's patented that is actually shaped in-house. It's two pieces shaped independently by hand and then clamped together. The result is that it breathes concentrically like an overcoil but unlike an overcoil, it's neither thick nor susceptible to shock. This watch is full of original innovations. And while large, it's not so huge that I couldn't wear it. I really do think a 17 centimeter circumference wrist or larger wears it best. But on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, yes, I could do it. And a big reason for that is just how thin this watch is. 50 of these were made. The first sports watch from Debitune, their first automatic movement, a real landmark piece, exceptionally rare. This is the first example I have reviewed. If you love the watches you saw today, reach out to T. Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.